and supportive interventions which uh, will uh, you know sort of be the pillar and backbone of preventing further community transmission varsha can we go to the next slide please so uh, in this particular session what is our learning outcome participants will be able to learn how to create community support for covid-19 you will be able to understand some of the key information and be able to give that information to people who have been asked to be on home quarantine or how to provide home care for the suspected case or the family member so this is the learning outcome for us for this particular session next slide please yes so um, i want to assure everyone that when you go into the community you will not be alone there will be a lot of people supporting you in this community level work and how can you gain more trust in working with the uh, you know the uh, community or the households that will be assigned to you for the surveillance work is to talk to these people and when we say uh, you know who are the key influencers within the village or within the communities that you will be asked to provide help so we know from our previous experiences also that there are always local influencers teachers sevaks local priests gram sabha workers gram uh, pradhans uh, and frontline workers asha anganwadi workers so these are all important uh, you know figures within the local community and you can talk to these people and you can gain uh, you know a sort of a supportive environment for carrying out all the public health interventions that you will be asked to do so uh, it's important that you then understand what is the protocol or what is the um, order which the government has given etc and how can you play a key role in supporting dissemination of some of these key messages so it's good that if you can maintain a list of the community network people and you know who to call for help in case you need more information the local medical officer um the district important people in the district etc the list of local influencers so that in case you face any resistance in the community or you face any difficulty in the community you know that you can reach out to these people and they can support you uh the second important function is to support people those who are on high risk so based on the understanding that we have about covid-19 also from some of the global settings and the data which is emerging shows us that there are two categories of people who are at higher risk of severe covid-19 outcomes first category is the elderly those who are above 60 years and second is those who may also have comorbid conditions and dr meera also talked to you about these comorbid conditions but since it's important i'm going to repeat this so people who have hypertension diabetes lung infection asthma kidney disease chronic respiratory ailments these are some of the categories of people we know may have serious a uh, covid-19 outcomes and may require icu care and hospitalization so uh please ensure that you know even the youngsters in the household understand that it's very important to follow social distancing so that they do not come back and infect the senior citizens in the family or those who have underlying health conditions in the family so it's very important that the prevention measures of covid be shared specially for these particular high risk groups so that we can prevent the serious outcome and the mortality which is associated with covid 19 we also understand that others in the community who may require additional care could be pregnant women uh, lactating mothers children as we know that these are always vulnerable groups and especially women in the households please arm them with sufficient knowledge because if anybody falls sick in the household it's typically especially in indian settings that it's the woman who's going to provide the care so communication therefore becomes very critical please also go to trusted websites read about what is happening it's still a new virus and we are learning lot of information is changing every day also about this virus and so global strategies are also evolving we have lot of interim guidance from who which is being posted every day so i would highly recommend this group 
to you know visit who and ministry of health websites frequently please arm yourself with the necessary knowledge tools discuss within your peers ensure that you have the right kind of knowledge to also further disseminate it to the community settings then the third is to coordinate with the existing community networks for support so coordination with asha workers anganwadi workers on distribution of not just medicines but also essential supplies moving forward we do not know what kind of lockdowns will still be operational maybe some states may have uh, you know a partial lockdown or a complete lockdown depending upon how the hot spots of the corona virus will emerge in the country so all this information needs to be available with you please also ask you know each household to maintain their own list of emergency contacts if anybody falls sick who they can call their immediate family members their friends etc for essential supplies such as food medicines etc we also expect at this fair moment that there could be issues related to gender based violence and child violence and please be on the alert that if you come across any of such issues where you can notify and where those people can seek help this is also a very important time for our communities because essential services etc have also been somehow impacted even though government is doing a lot to ensure that you know many of these services continue but it's possible that um, you know that some some of the people may face challenges and how the community networks can support them um in uh, you know circumventing some of these challenges is also going to be a very important intervention moving forward next slide please so uh, this is a slide which talks about a case study and this gentleman babulal he's been renting out his tractor for the last so many years and many people know him in the community but recently since babulal has started showing symptoms of cold and flu so people are avoiding him they don't want to talk to him and you know they are avoiding his family members and um, so he has decided to go to his city house so that he does not have to bear this kind of behavior now Uh, we understand that because this is a new virus and there are many still critical unknowns about this virus people can have a lot of apprehension and fear linked to uh, you know covid-19 so as a community um, you know surveillance um, support worker how you can contribute to this particular uh, you know issue so you will find that there could be cases of stigma and discrimination against covid affected people and not and it is also true that some people can think any cold cough fever in this scenario is a covid case so it's very important that you know we prepare the communities to understand that see not every fever or cold or flu is going to be a corona virus case and if a person does have symptoms where to seek help so as an influencer what is the right thing to do you can help you know the person talk to the person discuss what symptoms they have whether they have come in contact with anybody who had such kind of symptoms what advisory you can give them how communities can be made more aware about the fact that if somebody uh, is having symptoms where they can seek help you know the helplines are available union ministry helpline is available state has also come up with their own helpline so where they can seek the right kind of support and how to prevent discrimination and stigma against such families is also going to be very critical and in the next session dr vivek will walk you through specific information about handling stigma and discrimination next slide please next slide yes so here we are going to talk about home quarantine and Uh, you know we know that moving forward there will be some people who will be asked to be on home quarantine what is the meaning of uh, you know home quarantine is that somebody who may have come in contact with a suspected case or a confirmed case can be uh, you know asked to be home as part of the home quarantine protocol which means that currently that person is not symptomatic is he or she is asymptomatic but has been asked to be home and be safe so that they do not further if moving on they develop symptoms see what happens is that this virus has an incubation period 
we understand that the incubation period of this virus in most cases is about 4 to 5 days but can be even up to 14 days and therefore there are home quarantine protocols which the government of india has come out with if people have been asked to be on home quarantine they need to know and understand why they have to follow this guidance and how their behavior can impact further transmission of the virus in the community so please educate these people that why uh, you know they are being asked to keep distance why they should stay in a specific room away from other people other family members why they are being asked to use a separate bathroom uh, you know that if, and if they start developing symptoms what they need to do please ensure that such people are given the mask immediately and the nearest healthcare facility is notified immediately if they have symptoms and how anybody who is on quarantine needs to make sure nobody comes to visit them see limitation of visitors is going to be very important so that further anybody should not be coming in contact and definitely these people should not be using public transport or going to the market doing shopping going to public places etc so all this information has to be conveyed to them and the knowledge has to be provided to them so that they are well aware of uh, the need for social distancing also if they need to wear a mask how to wear a mask and uh, please go to youtube and learn how to wear a mask properly since if you have to go out in the community it's very important that you know how to wear a mask and also uh you know that when you uh you know when when you wear a mask it's also important to know i have seen lot of people their mask is dangling around the uh, below the nose and it is not even covering the face properly it's just like you know they are wearing them but it is not going to protect them so it's very important that you follow the right procedure keep yourself also protected make sure that you practice frequent hand hygiene we do not want any of our healthcare providers falling sick so thoroughly go through all these videos practice practice in uh, you know in such a way that you when you go out you should not have to put yourself at any additional risk next slide please so home care and lot of questions were being asked how to handle the clothes the bedding the linen so we'll cover some of these important issues uh, so i will go slow in this particular slide so that you understand clearly what is being conveyed so firstly if there is any person sick in the family only one person should be taking care of that sick individual and not that every family member should be you know you know coming in contact with that person no the advice is only one caregiver and both the sick person and the caregiver need to wear mask now hand hygiene is going to be very very critical we know this is a respiratory virus and which transmits through the droplet route so uh, both the uh, you know hand hygiene uh, social etiquette knowing how to you know conduct yourself in such kind of settings is also very important and surface disinfection i cannot emphasize more see these are droplets they are heavy droplets they tend to settle on the surface very quickly so commonly used high touch surfaces in the house people need to be educated about this you know the table tops door knobs uh, fixtures toilets phones these are everyday used items and you know many people in the family are using these high touch items even uh, anybody who is you know ringing the bell etc so all this needs to be taken care of so these are all high touch surfaces please educate the community about high touch surfaces and disinfection of these high touch surfaces and also any surfaces which come in contact with blood body fluids etc so all this can be wiped down with bleaching powder solution and uh, the slide mentions how to you know uh, um, you know uh, uh, work out you know how much uh, bleach needs to be put in how much water so please make sure that you know that all this can be done and that you keep the families also nicely um, educated about this now in terms of washing the laundry etc and dr meera also tried to address this question see we recommend that person uh, you know sh- uh, any person if is sick in the household should be uh, you know their clothes bedding etc even the person who is on quarantine 
their clothes, bedding, etc., should be washed separately. Their cups, utensils, um, should be kept separate because we know that you know certain basic following certain basic hygiene practices, it will be important moving forward. So these any um, bedding, clothes, or other clothes that have come in contact with blood, body fluids, etc. You can disinfect the linen in warm water and soap and dry it in the sun. And this guideline was also shared by Dr. Meera earlier. If using a washing machine, then you can put the soap and you can use the disinfectant and you can uh, run it on the cycle and dry the clothes in the sun. The linen can be soaked in hot water and soap in a large drum. If large uh, amounts of linen have to be managed uh, at one time, you can use a stick to stir and you can use soak the linen also in 1% chlorine for about 30 minutes. And Asha and Anganwadi workers have all been provided, uh, you know, these um, uh, bleaching powder solutions, etc. And they have been tasked to ensure that families are aware, etc. And if need be, they can share all this. So uh, all disposable gloves, face masks, other contaminated items in a person who is sick, etc. should be put in a biohazard bag or a garbage bag or at least double lined or sprayed with bleach etc kept for uh, if if you do if you're not if you don't have any of the disinfectants you can keep it for 72 hours we know this is a labile virus it will not stay for that long and uh, so all these important considerations please uh, read up there are specific disinfection guidelines also from the ministry of health available on website and so, please make uh, disseminate these messages also further down the communities. Next slide, please. Yes. So, uh, how the family members can stay safe if someone is on home quarantine? The person should be staying preferably in a, another room. But if it, this is not possible, then separate from the person as much as possible. The household members should also try and use a separate bathroom if possible. Avoid sharing household items, dishes, drinking, glasses, cups. I've already talked about this. Uh, wash hands as often you know, as you can with soap and water uh, or with 70% alcohol. And 20 seconds is important. And make sure that you know all the surfaces of the hands, uh, inter interlacing between the fingers, the thumbs, the back, so cover all these and there are good videos on hand hygiene which are available so that, you know, normally people just wash hands like this and they think they have washed their hands, but that is not correct. So we have to disseminate the right messages even on the steps of hand hygiene. Please go through all of these. There are a lot of interesting videos also which Ames has put out on YouTube. So please look for all these videos and uh, educate yourself, educate others. I think only through knowledge awareness and uh, prevention of COVID, we can really fight this particular uh, outbreak. And it's also important that any, uh, you know, family members, if they want to come in contact with somebody who has been put on quarantine, it is better to use a mask uh, and that disposable mask should not be reused because we know that that can be a bigger risk. So used masks should be considered as potentially infected and the masks can be disposed by soaking in home bleach solution and then putting it into the garbage bag and throwing it. And it's also important to make sure that small children don't, you know, come in contact with these masks because they don't particularly understand the risks and they can further, that can further lead to, uh, you know, people getting.